Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I thought we would look at creating a fantasy composite that looks like this. So lots of really interesting compositing ideas involved in this scene. Probably no animation in this version, but I may add it at a later point. So I am going to rush through this tutorial as much as I can. If I were doing this properly, I would take quite a bit longer over it as I'm sure you will. So let's get going. So my project dimensions are 1920, 1080. I'm using a frame rate of 24 frames a second and a duration of 10 seconds, but I don't think we'll be doing any animation in this tutorial. So anyway, let's come over and import our assets. So all of these here, just bring all of those in. So then what I want to do is to make a new group for each of these items and give it a name that actually makes sense. Seems a bit boring, but it really is worth doing. So then I want to make a new group into which I can put everything. So new group at the top, grab everything, drop it into that group. So let's just tidy this up by Alt or Option clicking on the group. And you'll see that when I open it back up again, all those enclosed groups have tidied themselves away. So this is good. So your order might well be different from mine, but make sure that the boat is on top of the desert and then let's turn off all the other groups. So let's first of all address ourselves to this boat. So what I want to do is I want to scale it down and put it in the background here. So I'm going to set it scale to 25% and I'm just going to move it over to sort of there. Then I want to give it a little bit of Z rotation like that. So it's going to look like it's really buried in the sand. So the advantage of having made a group is that we can take our rectangle mask tool and we can draw a mask like that. Sorry, I should have done the other way around, but then we can invert it. And then it really looks like it's sort of really deeply sunk into the sand. And then we can slightly feather that like that. So I think I'll probably leave the boat for now. Let's just close that up and move on. So next, I think we should look at the bottle. So let's turn that back on again and let's move it above everything else like that. Now, how are we going to make this bottle transparent? So first of all, I'm going to set its blend mode to multiply. And you can see that makes it see through. But I also want to keep some more of the original highlights. So I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to come over and I'm going to set its blend mode to lighten. And you can see now we've got the highlights back, but I actually want to dial this back so let's go for an opacity of about 40%. So that's good. I'm going to take my bottle group and I'm just going to move it over like this because I think it's going to be good if we're sort of hiding it behind the rocks like that. It's always a good idea to add foreground elements when you're compositing because it really helps to mesh things together. Obviously, I want to kind of put it behind the rocks and I'm actually going to do that by duplicating the desert layer or rather cloning the desert layer. Let's let's clone it. So right click make clone layer and I'm going to drag it up into that bottle group above the bottles. So then I'm actually going to turn it off and I'm going to zoom in and select the Bezier mask tool. And I'm just very quickly for the purposes of this demonstration going to draw like this. I'm not going to be too precise about it. You will want to be a lot more precise. And then if we turn back on our clone, you can see we've actually put the bottle behind the rocks. And we probably just need to do a little bit of feathering on that just to smooth it in like that. So the next thing I want, want to do is to replace the sky. So let's turn back on that sky group and let's bring it in above the desert like that. And I'm just going to select the sky layer and just dial back its opacity a little bit so I can still see that horizon line there. And then I'm going to move it up on Y so those horizons match with the horizon of the desert and the horizon of my sky replacement. And let's bring that opacity back up to 100%. So then what we need to do is we need to mask it behind the desert mountains. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to add image mask. And the thing is, I want to be able to use my desert as the image mask, but I also want to be able to color correct the desert. So I think the best way of doing this is to make a clone of the desert that we can then color correct. And for this image mask, we can drag in the original desert. 
And because you can probably see up here in the thumbnail, we've got lots of nice blue in the sky. We're going to set the source channel to blue and very quickly you can see we've got a sort of a composite that's almost working. I'm just going to turn off the desert while we have a closer look at this. And I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. I'm going to select my sky. I'm going to come to the rectangle mask tool and I'm going to draw a rectangle mask like that. And I need to set it to subtract and invert. And now, because we've got that original mask, we've now got a better selection there. And I'm just going to reduce the feather on that. So we're getting something like this. So maybe negative 200. And if I turn back on my desert, that's looking a bit better. But our original mask here is not quite dense enough. So let's select it and come to Color and Levels. And let's just crunch the black till those mountains go really pretty black like that. And then crunch in the whites as well like that. We're getting a little bit of bleed there. Probably doesn't actually matter. So if I turn back on my desert, we're getting this and that's looking much better. We've got this really dramatic sky in the background there. The only problem is that you can probably see at the top of this mountain here. Let's just zoom in to take a closer look. We've got this rather unattractive looking fringe. So I'm going to select this image mask and I'm going to come to filters and stylize and min max. And I want to switch to maximum and then let's go for two on that. And then let's also add a Gaussian blur. Let's go for eight for the amount. And let's set the min max radius to three. Oh, and I do need to turn on crop for that Gaussian blur like that, because there was a little bit of an edge there. If I turn that on and off, you might just be able to see that there. So I think now is probably quite a good time to enable the effect that's going to bring all of this together, because at the moment it just looks like a random assortment of stuff. So let's select our enclosing group and let's come to filters and color and gradient colorize. And this is a really interesting effect, as you can see. So it's using the luminance of the image to map this gradient. And if, for example, we were to take this middle value here, select that, push it over, we're pushing more darkness into the midtones. And in actual fact, let's add in a gradient from the library. So let's add Desert Dusk, for example. So the color that's over on the left, I'm just gonna remove that center tag there. The color that's over on the left is the one that determines the color of the highlights. And the tag on the right is the one that defines the color of the shadows. But it's quite important to match the luminance of the colors that we're replacing. So if we make this too bright, we just basically wash out the blacks. So the color we choose for the blacks has got to be more or less within the luminance range of the blacks that we're trying to replace. So talking about luminance, however, we've got a map channel and I think I'm going to experiment with using blue for this. And I think it just gives a much more interesting result in this particular case. So let's actually just switch back to grayscale with this. That's sort of more in the in the vein of what I'm actually going to try to achieve with this. So you can see just how, how that brings it all together. And we could, of course, just mix it back to 50 percent. And it's still doing that fairly useful job of keeping the colors a little bit within the same zone. So I'm actually just going to set this at 100% while we work, because I think it's a little bit easier. So a number of things kind of scream out at us. This back area of the desert is much too bright. So let's select this clone layer here and let's come to color and levels and let's just reduce the white level quite a bit. Now, the problem with that is that it's affecting this masked area. So whatever we do with this levels, we're also going to have to do with the clone that is up here. But let's just get this more or less right. Let's bring that down like that and maybe just flatten out the blacks as well. So we just want to reduce the contrast here like this. And I think this is going to work better for our scene. So then I'm just going to copy that command C and paste it onto this clone here. And you can see that join disappears now and we're in a better shape. And we also obviously need to now color correct our boat. So let's select the boat layer, 
color and levels. And again, we just need to flatten the contrast. First of all, I'm going to try and match those blacks. So bring up the blacks quite a bit like that and then bring down the whites so they match a bit better like so. And I'm just going to zoom into the boat because I want to check whether it's a bit too sharp. Yes, it's, a, it's too sharp in relation to what we're doing here. So one of the things we need to do is to check all of this is to make sure we're in best resolution there. And I think that might just take care of the issue. We're now no longer too sharp. We could apply a little bit of a blur to it, but I don't think we need to. So maybe we're now in a good position to add in our lightning. So let's turn on that group and I want to bring it in above the boat, but behind the bottle. Let's bring it in there. So the thing about our lightning is that it's extremely burnt out with this configuration. If I turn off the gradient colorize, you can see what we've got, but we've got a very bright sky behind the lightning and we need to be able to isolate the lightning. So let's turn back on our gradient colorize. Let's select the lightning layer. Let's come to color and levels and let's just crunch in those blacks until we're removing the sky pretty much altogether. I'm only interested in this left hand branch of the lightning. So I think I'm going to go with that. Then I want to turn on my overlays, so show overlays, and I want to set my anchor point for this layer to up to here. So let's select the anchor point tool and just drag it up to there. And this will enable us to rotate it and scale it about that point. And that's going to be so much easier. First of all, we need to position it correctly in relation to the bottle. So I'm going to do that. Just bring this down to there, I think, and then rotate it on Z like this and scale it down a bit as well. Let's go for that sort of scale, move it over a little bit more like that. So we want to remove everything that's outside the bottle. So we can do that by applying an image mask to this layer. So right click, add image mask. And again, we can take that bottom bottle layer, the one that's being multiplied, add it to the mask source there. Remember to turn it back on again. And now our lightning is isolated inside our bottle. But I just want to show you two things that are problematic. We are actually getting the lightning on the cap and obviously we don't want that. So we need to add an extra image mask to the lightning. So let's select it and let's select the Bezier mask and actually just draw carefully around the cap like that. Then subtract and it's subtracting it. You can see that that's now no longer lighting up the cap. So I'm going to select my lightning and I'm going to add blur and Gaussian blur. And that just helps to kind of soften it, embed it in a little bit more. Another thing I want to do is I'm not happy the way that the lightning goes all the way to the edges of the glass. And I'm going to select this image mask and I'm going to come to filters and stylize and min max. And I'm just going to increase this value till we move away from the edge here. So what have I got? About nine there. And you can see now, I think the glass now looks as though it's got a little bit more thickness. So I'm seeing something I'm not happy with here. You can probably just see we're seeing the edge of that lightning layer. And we need to add another mask to take care of that. So again, select the Bezier mask tool. Let's sort of draw like that. And then set this mask to subtract and then feather it just so we don't see that harsh corner there. And then we can actually push this lightning a little bit more. So I'm going to maybe reduce that black value to 0.85. And then this white value, I'm going to set that to 0.97, something like that. So we're punching it through a little bit more like that. The other thing I want to do with this lightning is I want to have it much brighter than anything else. It's already pretty bright, but I also want to keep its color that's going to be separate from this gradient colorize. So I'm going to select the lightning layer, right click make clone layer, and I'm going to drag it out above everything else like that and set its blend mode to linear dodge like this. Actual fact, we should probably done that with our original lightning. Let's do that. Let's set that to linear dodge as well. So the nice thing about this is we're keeping that lovely blue of the original lightning and that really makes it stand out against our background. There's a little bit of a problem here down at the bottom. I need to fix that. 
Again, we just need to add another Bezier mask in there. Sorry, this is a bit of a mess. So I'm just going to draw a mask like that just to make sure that lightning goes behind the rock like that. I set that to subtract and that's just removed that, stuck it behind the rock. So another thing we can now do to improve the look of this is to take this layer here, the glass bottle that's being lightened, that's giving us our highlights, and just come down to the rectangle mask tool. I'm going to mask off the bottom, but then invert it. So let's invert that and let's zoom out a bit. So that's darkened off the bottom half of the bottle. And then if we feather that quite a bit like this, I think it really increases the drama. We could maybe drop that mask down a little bit like that, but mask off, mask on. I think I think that's a, d a distinct improvement. So now I think it's time to commit to a decision about this gradient colorize. Let's select this color here and let's see what we want to do with it. I think I might just add a little bit of blue. Let's go for that and then come to the other end and take out some blue like this. Not very much. Don't know. I'm going to be unhappy whatever I do with this, I know. And I might just grab this one and move it left a little bit and probably just darken it down so we're getting a little bit stronger blacks like that. Let's just hide the layers and zoom in so you can get a better idea. Does that work? And maybe just dial back the mix value to 95%. So we're keeping a little bit of the original color, maybe even 90%. I probably just need to stop there and not waste your time. So. Turn back on the layers. There's one other element that I do want to mention, and this is this paper. So I'm going to drag this group right up to the top. I'm going to turn it on. I'm going to make sure this is set to 100%. And I'm going to select this layer and set its blend mode to multiply. And what this does is you can see it applies a texture over the top of everything, and we can dial that down a bit if we want. But with a still frame like this, it's often a really good idea to just add in a texture, just to mesh things together. And if you don't like this paper, we could always come to generators and add noise. We would need to desaturate it. So hue saturation, take out all the saturation. We'd probably want a slightly bigger noise. So I'm going to go for 150 for the scale. Let's turn off the paper and let's set this blend mode to multiply. And that's all much too much, but if we went for something like 20, again, it will just help to bed everything together. It adds noise into areas that don't have enough and just generally makes things a little bit better, I think. And actually a better choice of blend mode in this instance might be overlay. So just have a look at that. That probably is better, not just making everything too dark. And so we can dial that back to 10%. That might be a better answer anyway. I think we'll stop there. I'm not going to go into animating this, I don't think. Might do it just at a later date. So I hope I've given you enough pointers and you can make something interesting of your own. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I'll see you again soon.